Uh, para vocês terem uma ideia, uh, quem aqui já ouviu falar da GRI? Levanta a mão. Pouquíssimos, né? Uh, <risos> você não vale, não. Uh, a GRI, ela tem um... Se, você, se, ela, se eles falarem para vocês a... Uh, o quanto de clientes eles têm, vocês não vão acreditar, porque ultrapassa a, a população do Brasil algumas vezes. Algumas, algumas cinco, seis vezes. Então, eu posso dizer para vocês que é um prazer ter aqui um, um dos maiores uh, ícones uh, empreendedores do mundo na questão de aplicativos para celular, Sr. Ryotaro Shima. Uma salva de palmas, por favor, velho. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Moacil. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, I'm going to do my presentation in English, not Portuguese. So if you have need a translation, please ask one of the staff. Um, today, I would like to uh, talk about uh, our company and also about the uh, social mobile game industry. Um, I would like to ask uh, the audience uh, first before I start my presentation. So how many people have smartphone, majority of people. And how many people uh, have played games on smartphone? OK, quite a large number of people. And how many people are using uh, Facebook, either on web or most of the people? OK, I think uh, uh, it's quite interesting audience. Uh, I will talk a little bit also about Brazilian market, how I view the Brazilian market as well. So let me begin. Uh, oh, by the way, how many people knew GRI? Very few. That's good. Uh, I think uh, it is a good opportunity to explain uh, what we are doing. What is GRI? So what is GRI? So this is an explanation. It's a little too small. So I'm going to uh, read the first sentence only. So GRI is a global mobile social company providing mobile content and services backed by cutting edge technology. Well, it's quite difficult. It's kind of difficult to understand. So I would like to break down into some simple questions to walk through uh, what is GRI? The first question is, so when, we, when did we start GRI as a service? GRI is a, a name of the service. Uh, it, is, it used to be, uh, right now we are 100% mobile, uh, almost 100% mobile, uh, but we used to be a web service like Facebook. It, was, it used to be a social networking service. But we started the service in February 2004. Uh, by the way, Facebook also started in February 2004. Uh, so it was like the same timing. And then we shifted from web to mobile. Uh, right now, almost more than 95% of our revenues or business is in mobile. Uh, we decided to shift to mobile in June 2005. Uh, by the way, uh, Facebook a mobile version came out in 2006. I think the one year difference is quite critical. And also, uh, of course, lots of the country uh, companies are trying to move to mobile. But we decided completely to uh, put the resource into mobile in June 2005. And then the next question is, so when was our uh, mobile social game, first mobile social game launched? Um, so it was actually uh, May 2007. The title's name was Fishing Star. And by the way, Zynga's uh, one of the largest uh, social web-based game uh, companies. Uh, first uh, launched its title in July 2007. So we are a little bit uh, ahead of them. And please note that it was a mobile game. And I think that's the interesting thing here is that we launched the game Fishing Star. It's a very simple game. It's a fish game. And we used the old technology mobile phone. It was a simple game. But it is still ranked in 
uh, high, it still has a high ranking in iOS still now. The, this presentation is quite difficult to see, but uh, one day it was uh, ranked in 14. It sometimes goes into top 10 ranking. So almost six years has passed since its launch, but Fishing Star is now uh, in a higher ranking. And that is a kind of Green, a company called Rakuten. Rakuten is one of the largest uh, Asian uh, e-commerce site companies. And he started to set up his own uh, service site called Gree. But suddenly he found out that because the, so many users came in to uh, access his site and start using the Gree service, so he couldn't you know, do it by alone using only his spare time. So he decided to leave Rakuten and established his own company called Gree. And he became one of the uh, most successful entrepreneurs uh, in the world. And according to the Forbes, uh, he is the second youngest uh, billionaire uh, in Forbes history. I think you can imagine who is the first guy. Uh, it is uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, from Facebook. Uh, but actually, Mr. Tanaka is the second youngest uh, richest man, uh, actually, uh, right now. So uh, the company grew very fast, and it is very uh, in a successful manner. And how large are we is the next question. Uh, well, there's a lot of way to measure the size of the company, maybe the number of employees or market share. I think the most simple way to see, look at is the revenue. So this is the revenue graph of uh, GRI. And right now, uh, we have about 2 billion US dollar revenue. And the blue graph is the revenue, and the red graph is the operating income or operating profit. As you can see, we have almost 1 billion US dollar operating profit, which is about 50% operating margin. And the revenue has grown 500 times. I think that this explains a little bit of, uh, you know, how fast are we growing and what kind of size are we right now. But still, most of the revenues are coming from our own market, uh, Japanese market. So we decided to, you know, try to um, execute, try to uh, export some of the ideas uh, that we have learned in Japan, outside of Japan. So here's the international expansion. We obviously started from Tokyo. We opened the office. We opened the office in San Francisco, Beijing, Seoul, London, Amsterdam, Singapore, Dubai, and of course Sao Paulo. So we have almost uh, ten offices, uh, including Japan, right now, uh, in one and a half years, and we have uh, approximately two thousand people uh, working for Gri Group. So this is the uh, very, we are in the middle of international expansion. Uh, and by the way, I am a, a, a CEO of GRI um, UK. So right now I'm based in London. And also I'm the uh, SVP of EML business. 
EML stands for Europe, Middle East, and Latin America. So while I have a game studio in UK, I'm trying to find a market opportunities in uh, Latin America, including Brazil, of course, and Middle East, Africa, and Europe. So let's go back to the, the same slide that, that I showed in the beginning. Uh, but I think it's still difficult to understand GRI because I didn't explain about our product. So I think I would like to explain a little bit further on social mobile games, which I think everybody uh, here is interested in. So uh, what kind of products do we make? I will show a little bit of a lineups of our game. I think it's very small, so I, I, uh, I hope you can see it. I, I cannot see it, so quite difficult. But we have a wide variety of games, including RPG, car games, simulation games, sport games, romance games, and many others. And we create games all over the world. Uh, we have a game studio, of course, in Japan, and the US in San Francisco, uh, China in Beijing, uh, Korea, UK, and Canada. And we have approximately 500 employees in the US, uh, about 100 employees in China, 100 employees in Korea, 60 in UK. And we just started our Vancouver office as well. And some of the titles are very quite successful. And you can also play some of the titles. As you can see, uh, Modern Wall and Monster Quest, you can download it uh, from your iPhone and Android here in Brazil as well. And some of the titles are quite successful that it has uh, marked a high ranking in uh, some of the uh, Google Play or uh, you know, iOS ranking. But I think it is, uh, I thought that uh, I would like to show you a video clip, uh, what kind of game it is and how you play it. I think it's much more uh, easy way to explain it, what the games look like. So I hope the audio works. Uh, I'll start a video. some of the games and also the image of how you play our games. So, but I think, so you have a, now have an image of what kind of games are we making. But I think the more interesting part here on my presentation here is why social mobile game is so hot, so interesting. And I would like to, uh, you know, walk you through some of the uh, important factors why social and mobile games is quite interesting. So in order to do that, uh, we, I would like to go back a little bit of history of video games. 
So I think in Brazil, uh, the uh, Sega Mega Drive was a, is a big hit. And also people are now shifting to, you know, uh, Xbox and PlayStation, PSP beta. By the way, how many people have played Mega Drive? Well, it's quite a lot, yes. And um, how many people have played, you know, um, how many people have Xbox? Well, I think uh, it's uh, quite a large number. It's quite impressive. Um, and also, not only the console game, uh, but I need to look at uh, personal computer's history a little bit. So people started from a desktop machine. It was quite useful. But now people are using more laptops. And now it's moving toward tablets. And also, for the mobile, uh, we used to have a very simple black phones, and now People are using mobile phone, and more and more people are using smartphone, as I asked question in the beginning. So what does that mean to uh, companies like us? So I think you can say two interesting things. The first one is all the devices are now connected to internet, so you can communicate with each other. And the second thing is that, you know, people, uh, the 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 hardware is getting much lighter, and people can carry it. So it's a mobile. So what that means for us is that you know any game or all games can be social and mobile. So there's a lot of opportunities in social and mobile gaming market. And here's another interesting data, uh, which explains uh, about the market potential of social and mobile games. Uh, I tried to find a more interesting data, but I, I found a little uh, data on comparing the number of users on online console gamers versus the number of players of uh, mobile games. So as you can see, this is only for the uh, US market. But you can see that the number of mobile gamers is significantly higher than the usual online games. And also, the growth rate is quite high. So I think it's explained a little bit of what is, why mobile and social games are interesting. And one of the reasons why uh, uh, it is a very interesting market is that for example, from the viewpoint of people like us, we don't need to sell hardwares because, you know, regardless of what we do, people will have mobile phone and people will have more smartphones. So I think it's very easy for us to. Uh, it is very easy for us to expect that the market will grow. And also, what that means to us is that the audience is massive and growing every month. And looking at this. Um, uh, market is that uh, in the old traditional days, uh, if you are a console uh, traditional game makers, you need to ask users to buy the set top box, and the, most of them are core gamers. But right now, these days, the games are accessible, easy enough for everyone. So we can, what that means is that we can access to new customers. So it doesn't have to be a core gamers. You can access to people, for example, like my, um, you know, mother was uh, bought an iPhone, and he was just trying to, uh, she was searching an interesting apps, and you can find a, you know, lots of interesting games and just click it, and you, and she was playing it, which was quite difficult for uh, old traditional uh, console world to access. So that makes the market much larger. And also, uh, distribution channels are very simple. So you don't need to sell, uh, go through all the middlemen. You can just, for example, like if it is an iOS, you apply to Apple, and that's it. Uh, you, your games will be distributed you know, to many countries that you cannot imagine in the in, in last uh, tw 10, 10 or 20 years ago. And also, uh, development costs from the viewpoint of game developers are quite low because uh, mobile phone mobile phone mobile games are much simple and people are not people are not using three hours a day just playing games 
the, the game playing style has changed. People can uh, play the game, for example, like while they are waiting for the bus or in a train, in commuting time. The game style has changed. So I think it's a more simple but interesting game is now uh, becoming a large hit, for example, like uh, Angry Bird. So development costs are significantly lower, and the length of the development is also short uh, compared to the traditional games. And the one more interesting factor of uh, the trends of the mobile social gaming is the price. So most of the games, almost 100% of our games, it's free to download. And you can download on the iOS or Apple, Google, Google Play, and it's free. And it, even though it is free, you can ha enjoy the games quite significantly. So it's not a, it's, it, it, you, you don't, people, users doesn't have to pay a huge amount of money in order to uh, have a more interesting part. So the non-paying users can also play the game well. But people sometimes want to buy items or buy games for various reasons, like people want to have more strong items or in order to save time for a variety of reasons. Uh, some people will pay after uh, downloaded the game. So I think that this freemium model is quite interesting. It's not only applying to games, but uh, it is a very interesting business model that we are seeing. And that's why combining all these factors, actually the game, again, this is a very small uh, chart. Maybe it's quite difficult to see. But game is the number one category among uh, applications, including, for example, like news or weather forecasting or music, social networking. Actually, the game is the most popular application among, uh, uh, especially on the smartphones. So I would like to move on to so I talk a little bit about you know what the interesting thing about mobile. I would like to now focusing on focus on social because it is another interesting factor. So what it, what uh, does social mean? Well, there is a lot of uh, interesting uh, interpretation. I think we can write a thesis on that. But I would like to make it very simple. For social, you can imagine Facebook, Twitter. Skype, WhatsApp, Instagram, there are a variety of applications that you enable you to share, share your experience or communicate with each other. And I think the communication part is the key. So those tools will help you communicate with other people. I think that's a critical point. So some people uh, said to us that, oh, you're making games and you're adding social function in order to make the game more interesting. But we think that it's the opposite. So I think the core is the communication. People like communication, people like to socialize, the social function is important, and game is only the tool to facilitate the communication. So you can make friends with all, all people all over the world, and you can have an interesting communication. These days we have chats to you know, have a chat with other people, players. And I think the communication is the core part. And that makes the social and mobile games different from traditional games. So what are the social functions? Uh, I put down some uh, basic functions here. You can, of course, invite your friends to your game. And also, you can team up with your other players uh, to defeat bigger boss or you can also fight against each other. And it's quite interesting that you, know, uh, you can fight with uh, people who you have never met. If you are Brazilian, you can fight with a uh, Chinese player. That's quite an uh, interesting uh, topic. And it, it's very easy, because you're uh, using your own smartphone. And it is free. And it's a very interesting experience that we have never experienced, for example, uh, 10 years ago. I think those are the uh, very basic functions that people who have played social games already know. And I'd like to explain a little bit about more interesting stuff from uh, some, or, some of our games. So this is one example. Uh, this is from uh, our own game 
called Kurinope. It's like、uh, Tamagotchi. How many people know Tamagotchi? Oh, quite a lot. So it's like a nurturing、um, game. You will you know,、uh, feed your character and try to、uh, teach dancing and you know, ask, ask him, him or her to sleep, and you'll see how it grows. But the interesting part is not only that, you can visit your friend's house, of course, on the game, and you can just poke the, your friend's character. And once you are poked, you have more energy. This is a very simple way of communication, just poking. But it was a big phenomenon in Japan. And people like to poke to other friends, and it was kind of like a very interesting、uh, feature. It's a very, very simple, but another way of communication. And also,、uh, these days,、uh, more interesting uh, way, uh, social features. So, this is the game, another game called Dorirando. It's a, a very famous game in Japan. It's essentially an RPG card battle type game. So, it's an RPG. So, you will do your quest and collect cards. And, you know, not only collecting cards, if you have a, you know, special cards,、uh, you can have more bigger power. And the, the interesting thing is not only that.、Uh, if you are level one or level two, and you sometimes during the quest, you will encounter a boss. And you have a battle with him or her. I don't know, I don't know how they call it. But、uh, if you are level one or level two, you can easily defeat the boss. But if you became, for example, level four or five, some of the bosses are very strong. It, it is impossible to defeat by, only by yourself. So, in that case, if you want to move further ahead of the stage, you need to team up with other friends. And you will fight with other friends. And a more interesting topic is that some of the bosses i s called raid boss, R A I D boss. And the interesting thing is that raid boss you know, will disappear in one hour after you encounter him. So you need to ask your friends to log in within one hour and help to defeat him. Well, that's a quite interesting part. And if you are like friends,、uh, friends with your you know,、uh, friend that you know, you can、uh, call him or him or her to join it. But most of the time, it's, you know, people are friends with、uh, anonymous people. So I think it depends on other pe- players' behavior. You know, some people, if, if you are Brazilian,、uh, you know, some、uh, Japanese friends might w- join, even though the time difference is. And it's quite interesting. You can see, oh, friend A just joined. A friend B just、uh, hit、uh, 100 points. It's quite interesting. And I think、uh, one other interesting feature is that、uh, if you defeat some of the bosses, you can get some prize, some of the strong items. But there's interesting items called、uh, raid items, raid weapons. So this weapon is only effective to raid boss. So for the normal bosses, it doesn't、uh, have a strong power. But if it is a raid boss, Uh, it has a s- tremendous power. So that's why, if you have that very rare item, people will like to be friends with you. So it's kind of a very interesting way how people behave, and it's, it's a, another way of enjoying social games. And also,、uh, these days,、uh, these things are getting more、uh, real time basis. So,、um, for example, this game is、uh, called Zombie Joby. You can not only play real times, But also, you can team up with other players to defeat some bosses. So, the social mobile games h a s its own evolution. And if you, are,、uh, if you can try some of the games, uh, it, uh, you can find out、uh, how interesting it is. So, where do we go?、Uh, so, this slide、uh, explains a little bit about、uh, evolution of social mobile games. So, we have evolved during paired by the evolution of, of course, the phones. So, we started from a very simple mobile phone, and the game was very simple. And right now, it's、uh, 3G and also smartphones. So, if you go to smartphone, the, the size of the screen is much bigger. And also, of course, it's color, and you can use touch screen. 
So the game is getting more interesting and interesting by the evolution of the phones as well. And also, so the game is changing uh, from very simple action games, pet raising, as I explained, Klinope was one of them. And now it's getting more rich, you know, simulation RPG, and also some of that very action RPG, uh, action simulation. And as I mentioned, I would like to introduce one interesting game. So this, uh, we bought a company in Japan quite recently. It's called Pokerabo. And one of, the, one of their flagship game titles is called um, Cram Battle. What, what is interesting in that game is that uh, you can team up with other members, other friends, and you have a battle with other teams. And, uh, for example, uh, the battle will not take place all the time. It is only in a specific timing. For example, uh, 9 o'clock in the evening, Japan time. So in order to join the battle, you need to be there. Uh, and then uh, the, the battle takes one hour. It's a real-time base. So during the one hour uh, time, you don't have to be, stay, stay on the mobile for one hour. Uh, you can just go to rest, but whatever you want to do. But the interesting thing is that you will have a chat with other players. What is the strategy? Because the collaboration is important. Uh, you know, once you hit the, hit the, the opponent, uh, if the, your friends hit another, the hit point will get you know, double and triple. So the collaboration is quite important. And you have a separate chat, you know, trying to find out strategy. And also, you can uh, give recovery. Uh, items to your friends, and you can also, uh, w during the battle time, you can just go to Quest and uh, have a recovery items as well. So it's quite a very complex system on real-time basis, and you have a ranking of crans. And you can see, for example, my friend is in about 100, 109 ranking all over the glove. It's just, they have like a, more than 3,000 crans. So you can see how teams are doing, it's quite interesting. And I think the, uh, the processor power and also the high-speed internet, all those stuff enable us to make interesting social mobile game. It's still very simple, but it's a very interesting social features is included in those games. So I think uh, you can understand why people are interested in social and mobile games. And the size of the social game is expected to grow three times bigger uh, in 2015 compared to 2010. I think it's a very interesting market. Uh, and I think it will uh, have a lot of opportunities. And this is talking about the uh, global. So I would like to uh, conclude um, uh, the why social and mobile games are interesting. Because it's, I think, the based on communications. So communication is the key. And then games makes you, or provide you, a lot of opportunities and interesting social features to have more interesting communication with other players. I think that's the key. And I'd like to, a uh, little bit, uh, talk about, so what is the Brazilian market? Uh, how we see uh, the Brazilian market? Well, I think uh, people here uh, knows more than me. Uh, people like, you know, um, social networks, uh, social tools. It is apparently uh, number two country user in terms of the users of Facebook uh, next to US. And the graph shows that the population, in terms of the population, uh, you, you have uh, 194 million uh, people, and the number of uh, Facebook users is 65 million, Twitter 40 million, and LinkedIn 11 million. So it's a very, very interesting market. People like to communicate uh, with each other and share experience and socialize. So it's a very interesting market. And obviously, um, the social game market is growing. Although it is still small, uh, it is uh, 200, about 50 million uh, in, uh, is expected to be 238 million, but I think a lot of interesting factors support the growth of the market. 
Uh, for example, uh, smartphone shipment. We see a lot of uh, optimistic growth in terms of smartphone shipment. And I heard that you know, infrastructure in terms of the 3G or 4G is still a little bit behind, but I think uh, people are putting more investments in government. So we are pretty optimistic about the Brazilian market. So I think that there will be a lot of interesting uh, opportunities here. And that's why we opened up the office in Sao Paulo. And uh, there will be more uh, new entrants in the future, in the near future, and the competition will get severe. And I think there will be a, uh, a lot of, lot of interesting opportunities here in the Brazil market as well. And as you can see from my previous slides, it's more, it's not a cultural thing. I think it's, a, it's more uh, people's nature that people like to communicate with each other. And I think um, the game is, um, so in Japan, we have a lot of uh, interesting cultures like cartoons, manga, or animation. Um, but I think uh, game is one of the successful culture that we exported. Uh, for example, like uh, Sega Mega Drive or Nintendo, Super Mario Brothers or Pokemon. I think it's quite successful in the past. And I think we can do that as well. So for example, looking at uh, one of the largest giants of uh, Japanese uh, game companies called Nintendo, their revenues are 80% coming outside of Japan. The uh, percentage of revenues coming from Japan is only 20% right now. So this explains something. For example, our revenue is now 90%, more than 90% coming from Japan. So I think we can make it in an opposite way. So there is a lot of potential outside of Japan. And I think it is quite an interesting uh, time to explore the market. Thank you very much. And I would like to open up for questions. Uh, let me put on the translating. Boa tarde. Uh, uma das dos grandes problemas com jogos de jogos para celulares e jogos sociais é em relação à durabilidade deles. A, a Zinga agora teve o problema dela com a o Farmville, a Zinga agora passando dificuldades depois de um grande boom de popularidade dos seus jogos. Qual é o grande desafio para fazer jogos móveis e sociais tornarem uh, uh, terem um longo prazo, um longo prazo de vida e uh, continuar ativos depois de um bom tempo. Okay, um, I'd like to uh, explain. Okay, I would like to explain uh, what happened in Japan as well. We also had a similar, not a similar, but a problem about the billing. Uh, uh, some of the people spent too much money on our games. And we don't want that. So we put the limit on uh, our games that you can use. So I think in order to be sustainable, we don't want people to spend too much money. I think, you know, people need to enjoy. If it is like a exceeding the, the, the normal budget, it's not, it's not good for everyone. So we're not pursuing only the short-term profit. I think we, have, we need to be very friendly to society, and we need to look at long run. So in order to be successful business model, uh, we introduce some of the limits uh, that people can use. We knew that it will hurt our profit in the short term, but I think we thought that uh, uh, it, it's going to work in long, long term. Hope that answers to your question. Uh, next question, please. Eu gostaria de saber se a Gree 
tem algum interesse, o que, que ela pensa do mercado de jogos sociais com fundo educativo, para ser aplicado como um objeto de aprendizagem para a educação? Well, I think uh, education is one of the interesting uh, interesting area that we will like to pursue in the future. Well, I think there are a lot of interesting. Uh, we're not. Uh, we of course our revenue is coming from 90 more than 90 percent from games, but our CEO Tanaka, Mr. Tanaka, uh, always emphasized that we are more internet company. Uh, we're not only making games. We are making games because of needs of the people users. And if the need changes, we're going to move to, uh, we're going to provide new service. And I think that one of the strengths is of ours is that we can make a first decision making and move faster, I think, compared to all traditional Japanese companies, because we are still young. Uh, we can make, uh, you know, rapid decisions. And uh, I think that execution is the key. So, for example, like education, or even, uh, for example, um, Uh, merchandising or music or messaging. And there are a lot of interesting areas just around us. And I think we can, if we have enough users, I think we can leverage uh, to provide interesting service, services to our users. And I think there's a lot of opportunities that we are thinking. Uh, I, I cannot uh, announce a firm plan, of course, right now, but I think uh, it's a very interesting topic. Next question, if you have. É, boa noite. É, gostaria de agradecer a, a apresentação, que eu achei muito bacana, e é, perguntar para vocês se a Gri, no tempo próximo, no médio e longo prazo, tem intenção de é, começar uma operação aqui no Brasil também de desenvolvimento, ou só no escritório aqui em São Paulo como, é, como o, o back office, né, essa parte mais administrativa mesmo. Well, I think uh, we are uh, looking at every opportunities. Uh, we are looking at not only in Brazil, but also all over the country, where is the uh, next uh, development studio will be. And I think we'll look at all the opportunities. I think I mentioned that, as I mentioned, that Brazil is a very interesting market in terms of the potential of the market growth, even though it is a little bit uh, still very small. I think it's a very potential for growth. So right now, the reason why we open up the office in Sao Paulo is start researching because it's an interesting market. You'll see the, the you know, uh, Olympics coming, Olympic in coming, and also large populations is having more smartphones. So uh, definitely, it is an interesting opportunity. We will, of course, uh, uh, try to think about. Olá, boa tarde. Fazer a pergunta. Está com fone ali, aqui. Yes. Estou aqui. Ok. Olá. <risos> então, é, eu queria perguntar mais sobre a, a influência da cultura local dos países nos jogos. Por exemplo, vocês já estão em vários países, China, Japão, Estados Unidos. Eu acho que cada país deve ter um perfil de jogos que eles preferem mais. E se isso você, vocês levam isso em consideração quando vai desenvolver os jogos. E eu queria saber mais sobre esse impacto nos jogos e quando na decisão que vocês tomam para desenvolver os jogos. Thank you very much. It is a, it is a, a very interesting topic. Uh, the reason why we opened up the office uh, outside of Japan is to um, to understand local markets. So if you you know some of the companies are making games in Japan because it's the internet. You can upload the game from Japan and you know, you can reach to people all over the world. But I think it, it doesn't work like that. So for example, looking at the data, uh, for example, um, the obvious example is the taste of the games or motif of the games. For example, uh, zombie games are very popular in US or Western countries, but you will never see zombie games in Japan, right? So. Uh, there are certain um, motif or game genre that is more appealing to people in the local area. That's why we open up an uh, office, for example, in China to understand Chinese people's behavior. In Korea, for example, it's quite different. So I think, but the important point is that some of the game mechanics that we learned in Japan is applicable, 
but not simply exporting the model. We need to modify it that uh, you, can, uh, you can be accepted to the local community. And also, there's not only the motif, but you, so, you also have lots of regulations. Some words is not acceptable to in certain countries, so you need to do a lot of research on that. That's why local operation is quite critical for us. And that's why we open up our studios uh, in many countries. Boa noite. É, você disse que o mercado aqui no Brasil ele ainda é considerado pequeno, mas com um bom potencial. É, queria saber o que é que causa ou o que é que atrapalha que esse crescimento seja maior ou mais rápido aqui, aqui no Brasil especificamente. As I mentioned, uh, I think, for example, uh, the, for example, the infrastructure. Uh, you need to have more high-speed internet, and also uh, more and more people. Because it's a local business, more and more people, like people here, need to join the develop, you know, make games or creating games. And we need to have in, uh, exporting games to local market that just doesn't work. We need to have more inner power on the enthusiasm to make the game, social mobile gaming industry an uh, interesting place. And I think a lot of people, because I came to Brazil and met a lot of people, people are very enthusiastic about trying to make the, make the uh, market. Uh, not only private people, but the government people are very interested in how to make it happen. So I'm quite optimistic, but it still needs time to see the rapid growth. But as you can see from the data I showed, I think there's a great potential because people like to communicate with each other and I think the game is quite interesting media that can be applied, you know, that people can enjoy all over the world. Any more questions? Maybe not. Boa noite. É, você falou que tem escritórios ao redor do mundo para poder entender o público de diversos locais, né? A cultura, como que eles gastam o dinheiro deles, né? Para poder ter um, é, uma noção melhor do mercado. E isso será usado como na produção, por exemplo, de um jogo mais universal, assim, que, que tem apelo a públicos diferentes, lugares do mundo, ou a produção de jogos, a produção de jogos mais é, direcionados a um certo público. Por exemplo, você falou de jogos de zumbis, que são é, pelo maior ao público ocidental. E certos jogos têm apelo mais ao público oriental. Então, vocês estão direcionando a, um, é, a jogos assim que pessoas do mundo todo possam aproveitar? Ou vocês consideram, por exemplo, jogos que sejam que vocês sabem que vai vender mais é, nos Estados Unidos? Ou então algum tipo de jogo direcionado ao só europeu? e outros só asiáticos, assim, vale a pena investir em jogos, no ponto de vista de vocês, é, localizados? Yes, uh, as I mentioned, uh, development cost is uh, significantly lower compared to the old traditional games. And we have a, a, a strong cash flow enough to support uh, developing many games. So we launch games, uh, not only one or two games a year, it's like, you know, 30 or 40 games a year. And we can take a, a lot of approach. One game can be the main target maybe only for Japan, and one game only for US. Uh, let me give me an example. So we, uh, as I mentioned, I am based in London, a UK office, and we announced that we're gonna make games using uh, Moshi Monsters character. Moshi Monsters character, I'm not sure you know it, but it's very popular among English-speaking countries. And so in that case, obviously, the main target will be UK, Australia, US. So I think not only focusing on local markets, you can have an experimentation, 
And I think who knows the, the, what kind of games will be popular. So I think there's an interesting approach. That's why you see a lot of variety of games coming up in the ranking in fall. Uh, so if it's a very uh, growing stage still, so there is no single winner yet. I think that's the in interesting part of this industry as well. Boa noite. Pelo que eu pude entender, o sucesso da Agri veio mais por causa da integração entre os usuários. Um usuário, no caso, precisa do outro para conseguir mais pontos. E para que haja integração, deve haver conexão. Pensando nos problemas de infraestrutura do Brasil, com conexão e tudo mais, 4G que ainda não temos, aqui eu estou funcionando em Edge, que nem 3G não é, qual a estratégia da empresa para conseguir conquistar o mercado brasileiro? As I mentioned, uh, uh, we are uh, still in the research phase. Obviously, uh, it, as I mentioned, the infrastructure, infrastructure like internet speeds need to be improved to have uh, uh, to enjoy the, the rich content uh, games, as I explained in some of my slides. But I think, uh, you know, it, uh, time will, will overcome and we will see when is the right timing to jump in and launch uh, as many games as possible. By the way, we have, uh, you know, uh, approximately 10 games accessible in Brazilian market already and five games uh, on, on, the, on the Android. So I, I can try it out. But I think, of course, uh, you need to have more strong infrastructure uh, to enjoy the full version. But I think, as I mentioned, there are a lot of variety of games. Some of the games are very rich, con rich uh, content that needs, sometimes need high internet, but I think people can use Wi-Fi on the home to enjoy it. But some other games are very simple enough that does not require uh, internet connect connection that much. So I think there's a, there is an uh, interesting way to approach this problem. Uh, I think we need to look at it step by step. I think uh, for the sake of time, I think that will be the last question. Boa noite. É, eu acredito que o custo de desenvolvimento desses jogos aqui no Brasil deve ser muito mais baixo do que nos outros países, como no Japão, no Reino Unido e tudo mais. É, valeria a pena construir aqui centros de desenvolvimento para desenvolver esses jogos para serem jogados nos outros países, mesmo que tendo que investir mais em treinamentos e aprimoramento dos, é, digamos, que desenvolvedores brasileiros? Yes, uh, I think, uh, as I mentioned, we are looking at, you know, many potential places to build a studio. And, of course, Brazil could be one of the potential. And I think uh, when you look at uh, how you choose um, the country, I think you need to have not only the, you need to look at not only the cost, but also you need to go and see and meet developers and see how enthusiastic they are. And I think uh, there is still, uh, because the market is relatively small, I think there is, we, need to, we need to wait a little bit because there are a lot of, you know, the education rate is getting higher, higher and higher in Brazil, so there are a lot of potentials, good engineers, but I think people are more not going jumping into the, the social gaming market is not a one priority right now because the market is a little bit slow. But I think it's a chicken and egg problem. If the market is going to grow big, a lot of people, smart people and interesting people will join this in industry. And I think that's the timing. We will meet, meet them and that could be an interesting uh, opportunity to think about uh, uh, de developing a, a studio. And I think it doesn't have to be, of course, Brazil is one of the good candidates, but I think it can be applied to all over the world. So we, we, we would like to assess uh, every opportunities in the glove. Okay, I think uh, that will end up my presentation. Uh, thank you very much today. Uh, muito obrigado.